If you have just recently installed Windows 11 and you are either a gamer or a power user, then today is the right video for you where we are going to go through all these pesky services that are enabled by default as well as power profiles and various other settings that can not only affect your FPS but ultimately affect your user experience on this operating system. So without further ado, let's get into the first bunch of settings right here, starting off with core isolation. So if you go down to your search bar and type in core isolation, it'll bring up this pesky setting that on Windows 11 is usually enabled by default. Now, if you're especially on an Intel CPU, I found disabling this in a lot of various games can actually affect FPS up to the tune of around 10%, which is a huge detriment to performance. If you're on AMD, it will depend on the title, but overall I found on AMD Ryzen CPUs, it did not make too much of a difference. Though on to the next setting that can also affect your FPS, and this is the Spectre and Meltdown patches that are enabled by default. And I found on a lot of older Intel CPUs, say for instance, an i7-4770 or an i7-6700, having these patches enabled can actually affect your FPS in games. So what we do here is we can download a program called Inspector, and I'll put the link in the description below for this program. So after you've downloaded this program, you then open it as administrator. And here's where you can now disable the Spectre and Meltdown patches. You'll have to restart your system, but after you do this, the FPS should be better. Now, the third biggest hint I have is if you're especially buying a pre-built gaming PC, a lot of these pre-built gaming PCs come with third-party antiviruses. Think, for instance, Norton. This is a classical one that a lot of these antivirus programs, they'll actually affiliate with these pre-built companies like HP and Dell, for example. And whenever you sign up for these antivirus programs, they get a kickback as well as an initial kickback for installing the software. However, they affect performance and they can also block certain games like Valorant, for instance, from opening up. Whether you've got one year of free subscription or a three month trial on this antivirus program, I like to uninstall it. As believe it or not, Windows has its own antivirus program built in called Windows Defender, and it has come a very long way since it was first introduced and now does an exceptional job of doing what these so-called third party antiviruses are supposed to do. Though after we've just installed Windows 11, I find by default there's always this program in the bottom right hand corner of Windows. It's called OneDrive. If you use OneDrive, then sure, go for it, but I've never used OneDrive. I actually personally use Google Drive, and that's not a program on Windows that's running in the background. So I right-click on this, I go to Settings, and then I go to Not Boot Up whenever Windows boots up. However, I also go into Programs and Services and uninstall OneDrive completely. The next big setting here is Windows Search Settings. So we just go down to the search bar here, type in Windows Search Settings, and left-click on this. Now, when we're in this tab, we wanna make sure this is set to classic and not enhanced, as enhanced can definitely take up a lot more time when you're searching for certain files. And since I'm a video editor, I actually put a lot of new files on my system constantly, so I actually don't want those files being indexed if they don't have to be. Though next up, while we're on that search bar, I want you to type in services and then left click and open up this tab. And what this will bring up is all the background Windows system services that are running. There is two main services that I always disable in this tab. And I find you have to actually check this every few months Otherwise, they just get, keep getting re-enabled. And the first is connected user experiences and telemetry. So we right click on this, left click on properties, and then go to startup type and then go on the drop down disabled. And we also click stop and apply and then OK. Then the next service we can do this same process to is a service called distributed link tracking client. Make sure that's disabled and stopped. And this should speed up your system, especially when you are using Windows on the main desktop. However, before we move on to any more of this tutorial, you have to make sure your Windows is activated to get the latest features and personalization tabs unlocked in Windows itself, as well as getting rid of that annoying Windows needs activation message. And today's video sponsor, VIP SCD Keys, you can get activated with Windows with a single end user license key for as little as $14 using that link in the description below, as well as the coupon code 
BFTYC on checkout. Now, SCD keys have been a longtime sponsor here on the channel. All the keys that they sell, I've never once had a problem with these keys. Neither has anyone that's been using this service for a long time ever had any problems with their keys being deactivated. And that's because they're authentic OEM keys. So all you have to do to get activated on Windows 11 is even use a Windows 10 Pro key because they're cheaper and they work for Windows 11. So you just use that link in the description below, pay for the key, and then it's instantly delivered. You can then copy paste that and on your activation tab, click on activate, paste the key in, click next, and then Windows should be activated. Make sure you use BFTYC for that juicy discount. Let's get back to the optimization guide. The next setting we can go down to is search, defrag and optimize. And here's where you can have Windows schedule to automatically defrag your hard drives as well as trim your SSDs. This is a service that I have run once a week because I actually forget to do it. However, if you are a hardcore gamer and you do like doing this manually, what you can do is disable this service and then manually check in once a week or so and do it yourself because it will be a background service that will be running and so if you're a pro gamer, you probably don't want any services that you don't need running while you're gaming. So for video editors and power users, I would leave this on. For gamers, I would actually turn this off. So next up here, we've got capture services. And this is quite a big thing to talk about where on default, Windows has their Xbox capture. So we can go down to the search bar and type in capture and bring up this tab. And what I do here is I actually personally disable all the Windows capture since I use Shadow Play, which is NVIDIA's capture service. And that's because it uses the GPU's encoder, which is very efficient and very effective. Now, if you're on AMD, you've got Radeon Live. If you've also got an Intel iGPU, you can use OBS and take advantage of QuickSync, which also works really well. However, that being said, the Xbox capture is the only service currently that I know that properly captures HDR. So that may be some food for thought, but there are a variety of services available. But I do personally recommend only using one service as you don't want multiple services running while you're trying to just capture gameplay, for example. Next up here, we've got the mouse settings, which Windows 11 by default has enabled enhanced precision pointing services. So we get down to our search bar and we type in mouse, then we can go to additional mouse settings. And this will bring up a completely different tab where we can then move over to uh, pointer options up the top here. Now you notice this setting, enhanced pointer precision. This will be enabled by default. So if you're a pro FPS player playing Apex Legends, Fortnite, or the latest Warzone 2, for example, manage to disable this setting. Essentially what this is, is acceleration on your mouse. I personally leave it on because I edit videos a lot and it's actually really good for when I'm playing games like Dota 2 or StarCraft 2, for example. So if you're an FPS player, I'd recommend disabling this. If you're an RTS power user, I'd recommend leaving this enabled. But now we're going on to Steam itself. So most gamers will have Steam installed since there's a lot of free to play games on there and pretty much everyone has Steam that I know of that plays games online. So Steam itself, however, has some settings on by default that are quite annoying. So first off here, we're going to disable Steam. And also if you've got Discord, you can disable Steam and Discord overlays if you don't use them. So I don't get annoyed while I'm playing games. Also, if you're on pretty bad internet, like I am here in Australia, you can have Steam limit the downloads to certain times, not during gameplay, for example. And you can also lower the maximum download speeds lower than that of your total internet speed. So essentially what this will do is if you're playing a game and it does download or you are downloading games while you're playing games, you don't want to be maxing out the bandwidth of your internet because this will essentially cause a lot of lag. But if you've got still bandwidth available on your internet, you can use that bandwidth for gaming and you'll be fine. So next up here, we go down to the search bar and type in edit power plan. Now, if you're on a desktop and you are a power user, for example, I recommend going to a change advanced power settings. Now here, I like to go through and turn off my hard disk. I like to set this to zero as well as desktop background settings with slideshow. I like to have this paused. However, this, keep in mind this high performance mode may also use up higher idle power consumption as well as using higher power in general. So if you are on a laptop, I would recommend the balance out of the box settings. But if you are a power user and you like having your desktop be responsive, the best it can be at all times, then I do recommend doing these power option settings here. So next up now we go down to the search bar, type in MS config, and this will bring up a menu with five different tabs. And we can also go over to the services tab here, 
which will have various settings that I personally, I have some of these disabled. Ones which I recommend uh, disabling here is problem reports control panel support as well as Windows error report servicing. So you can disable these by just simply left clicking them and then clicking OK. For these services to be as disabled, you need to restart your computer. Now, also there are other services you may wish to check for, which on a lot of systems install by default. Say for instance, Razer Chroma will install a lot of the time a service, even if you don't have any Razer gear connected to your PC. So I personally like to disable this service as well, since I don't use any RGB software on my PC. Some other popular ones to check for are things like Corsair IQ and other services that can run in the background that can cause detriment to that precious FPS. So next up here, we'll move through the settings app. And the first page we're gonna start off with here is the display tab. Now this has a lot of settings to run through. First off, I like to go down to nightlight and schedule this to regular hours when the sun goes down and the sun is coming up. Now you can set the strength to whichever you wish. I like to have mine set to around about 40%. It looks really good. It makes it a bit more orange, relaxed for my eyes. And then I move through the color profile. And here's where if you have a good HDR calibration or external uh, display cal color profiles installed, you can make sure they're enabled here, but also HDR, important setting. If you've got a monitor that supports HDR, you may wish to turn this on. However, that being said, if you are a content creator and you are streaming, for example, I would recommend leaving this off as it can cause a lot of conflicts to what your viewers see versus what you see. However, if you are an end user gamer and you're not recording any content, Windows 11 has some amazing HDR options available that just simply work. And another thing I'd recommend here is going to the Windows Store and getting the Windows HDR calibration app, installing this, and then you can perfectly set your white and black points to have it so you're taking advantage of these HDR settings. Then also after we've turned on HDR, we can then left click on this tab and we can also in this page itself, if you've got HDR support, you can enable the differences between the HDR and SDR content to the same balance profile. So I like to do this on any HDR monitor just to ensure I'm gonna get a smooth experience whether I'm transitioning through SDR versus HDR content. Now also in the HDR tab itself, we've got auto HDR. I like to leave this on. And honestly, there's no games I've played where this looks bad. I'll put a list of games on screen that I've personally tested that look really good. If, but if you experience a bad auto HDR experience, the option is to disable it here or otherwise just leave it on. Now moving through the display settings, there's the scale setting. Personally, if I'm using a 4K OLED, I like to have this at 225%. If you're using smaller, say 28 inch 4K monitors, I like to have this on 150%. But of course, if you're on a 1080p monitor, then I usually like to leave this on 100%. If you've got a 24 inch, for example, or a 27 inch 1080p monitor. So the scale settings, just play with this tab. You can instantly move it around and get live feedback on what the setting you like to have. And this is what it's all about with optimizing Windows is what's best for you. Now, if we move down now to the advanced display, refresh rate, very important setting, make sure this is the highest available because I cannot tell you how many times I've tuned people's PCs when they've bought a brand new 240 hertz or 144 hertz monitor and this has been set to 60 hertz. In other words, they're not getting any benefit out of their latest and greatest monitor. Though also, if you do try and set higher refresh rates and your screen, say for instance, starts flickering, this can be an indication that your cable, say for instance, your HDMI cable, is actually not of good standard. So in that case, I would recommend if you're on a 4K OLED, for example, go out and buy a proper HDMI 2.1 certified cable, and this should fix this issue. So next up, we're going down to graphics within this display page, and we're going to left click on change default graphics settings. And here's where we've got two options here, where we've got hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Now, if you're just a gamer and you don't do anything else, I'd recommend turning this on. However, if you are editing videos like I do, I'd personally leave this off since I do the majority of my work editing videos. 
I found this setting can conflict with, uh, for instance, Adobe Premiere Pro to the point where it causes random black screens and random blowouts. So depending on what you do, this setting should be on or off. So next up here, we can go back to system and then we can go to sound. And what we're gonna do here is if we have a lot of speaker devices that we know we don't use, we can just left click on that speaker. For instance, I use a Logitech sound system here. So I actually don't need my LG speaker system on the TV itself. So I can go to this little arrow on the right hand side and then I can click on don't allow. And so this will essentially disable this audio on my LG OLED, for example, to not be on all the time. Also within the sound system uh, devices that you do use, if you are a gamer, click on speakers, for example, when I use this, I wanna actually make sure this is set, if you're a gamer, to 24-bit 48 kilohertz. That's because all the games that come out are actually designed, believe it or not, for 24-bit 48 kilohertz. If you are, however, EQing audio or you are producing audio, then I'd recommend grabbing this tab and dropping it all the way down to the bottom to the highest setting. So this will allow me to extract the most out of my DAC solution. But lastly, there is spatial audio setting. If you are playing on headphones and you want a bit more oomph in your games, you can turn Windows Sonic for headphones on. So next up here, we can left click on the system page, the core page itself, go down to notifications, left click that. And what we can do here is when you're gaming you can actually turn on do not disturb and that will stop any apps from automatically pushing notifications on and essentially canceling you out of a game this is really good if you are a competitive fps player but also within that you can go all the way down to the bottom left click on additional settings and i like to turn uncheck all these three tabs down here they're actually annoying i don't need them they're additional problems that can get in your way after doing that, we can now left click back on this system page and then scroll all the way down to the bottom to the about section, left click that and then left click advanced system settings. And here's where we're going to pull up five different tabs up the top and we want to go left click on advanced and then left click on performance settings. And here's where I do actually turn off a lot of settings that slow down my Windows desktop experience. So basically what I'm gonna do here is uncheck all these top seven tabs, except for enable peak. I like to leave this on. I find turning this off can actually interrupt with some apps. But then also underneath that, I like to left click and turn off the slide open combo boxes, as well as show shadows under Windows. And essentially what this will do is it'll just clean up our whole desktop and make it just a bit snappier when we're going through tabs. And you'll notice things will feel, they should feel actually automatically more responsive. Though also within this tab, we can left click now on system protection. And this is a controversial one, but I've never once used Windows system protection. I found that it just simply doesn't work even when I need it. So why have my disk space and a service running that I don't need? So I can left click on this drive here, click configure, and then left click disable protection. And now after we've done that, we can then click okay, and system protection should show us off. And then we can left click on the remote tab. And what I like to do here is make sure allow remote assistant connections to this computer is turned off as well as don't allow remote connections to this PC. This is especially important for your grandma or your granddad in if that they're using their computer a lot of hackers will actually try to do remote desktop and then hack their bank account details for example but if this is all disabled this will just block out an option of someone hacking their pc or scamming them essentially and here's within the bluetooth tab if you're using bluetooth devices whether you've got phone link set up between your phone and your computer or you've got a bluetooth uh, keyboard for example then you can leave this on. But otherwise, I don't use Bluetooth with my PC. So I actually turn this off, not only in the Windows page here, but also in my BIOS. And since we now have a device switched off that we're not using, we're saving just a little bit of power. Then next up, we can move down to the network and internet page here where we're on this page, we can go into ethernet. Now, if you're on a metered connection, you can set this feature on and this will reduce the amount of data you both receive and transmit like peer-to-peer -peer Windows updates, for example, but it will break some functionality. So don't turn it on unless you need to. This is good for data limited home internets, for example, or hotspots or phone hotspots or mobile data hubs. However, if you use 
public Wi-Fi a lot too. There's also a setting where you can enable random hardware addresses to limit data collection. But if it's a desktop at home, you probably leave this off as then that's easier on your home router. Now after moving through that, we can go to the personalization tab and this is completely subjective, but I mean, I'm gonna tell you that it should be objective but we want to enable dark mode here. It just, everything looks so much better in Windows personally. And we can do this by left clicking on the colors page here and then just going to choose your mode and going from the tab here from light to dark. Now we can also turn on transparency effects if you like your windows looking really pretty, but this will affect the performance slightly. So I like to turn this off personally. Now below that, you've got a centered colors. I like to go to manual and set this to red. Main reason being is red is the easiest color on your eyes. And so whenever I've got the option to put red colors on my PC versus other colors, I do. Now, after you've personalized your windows exactly like I have, you can then left click on apps here. And we, what we want to do is go to installed apps and we want to go through this list here and uninstall any apps that we don't need. There's actually quite a few of them on, for example, for instance, alarms and clocks. I use my smartphone all the time for an alarm so I can just uninstall this app. I do not need it. And then there's other apps in here, which you'll find that are just lingering around and you wanna get rid of them. And then notice that you've got a lot less bloat, even from a clean Windows install from the get-go. Now also going back to apps, we can then left click on offline maps and just make sure this is off and it's showing zero downloaded. But I think now with Windows 11 by default, it does have offline maps just basically turned off, which is a good thing because it actually had it enabled by default on Windows 10. Though going back to the apps again, we can left click on optional features. And here's where you can go through and install things that you may need. I need Japanese supplemental fonts so I can go to view features and I can add this in from the tabs here. Though next up here, we can go to startup from the apps page. So left clicking back on that apps page and going left clicking on startup, we can then disable things that are constantly running, but you don't need. For instance, I use Skype, but I don't need it on every time I start up my PC. I use Skype randomly when I need to call someone. So I have this off by default. There's also some other settings here that you may wish to turn off like Java update scheduler. So after we're done with apps, we can then go down to accounts. And what we're doing here is going down to left click sign in options. And here's where you can turn on Windows Hello sign in. Essentially, you can have this with a pin code, which is what I use. You can use a fingerprint scanner if you've got that hooked up to your PC. I mean, people can still get access to your data, but at least it makes it a little bit more difficult when you have this turned on. So I do personally have this on, but if you're a gamer and no one ever gets access to your computer, but you, you can just turn this off and free things up and save a little bit of time. Now moving through after accounts, we can left click on time and language. And here's where we left click on date and time zone, just so it finds the time and date for our PC. And then for time zone, set this to the time zone that you are currently at. In this case, it's UTC plus 10, which is Brisbane time in Australia here. And then you can have your times set up. And this is very important because if you're using certain apps and say, for instance, your computer thinks it's in 2000, and 20 and it's 2022 the apps may just not work at all i know for instance google chrome and microsoft edge won't work properly if your time is set incorrectly you can also with windows 11 left click on language and region and here's where if for instance you need a different language installed you can install it from this tab here's where i've installed japanese but also here it's a very powerful tab because you can change your display operating system language for instance, my son, he prefers to use Windows with a Japanese OS. However, although I initially set up his computer with Microsoft Windows in English, I can then easily change this to Japanese just with a few clicks of a button in this tab. Now, finally, we're going on to left click to the gaming pages here. One of the most controversial, but also one that's actually not that great anymore. <laughs> uh, you got the Windows Xbox Game Bar. I like to have this turned off. And then if we left click on graphics, we're really just getting back to that tab that we already optimized before with system display. There's also in this setting, the captures, which we already talked about with the HDR content earlier in this video. And then left clicking here, we've got game mode, 
which if you are a gamer, I do recommend turning this on. However, if you are like me and you're video editing, I personally leave this setting off. So if you're a power user, workstation user, turn this off. If you're a gamer, I would leave this on. So after we're done with gaming, we can go to accessibility tab, which is very powerful if you say, for instance, are colorblind or you need a narrator if you are blind. It's got some powerful settings here, but I will talk about my personal favorite, even though I'm not colorblind, and that is to go down to color filters. And what we can do here is we can turn this on initially, and I like to then left click this on inverted, and then I like to turn it off. However, below that, I like to have the keyboard shortcut for color filters. I like to have this actually turned on. And so what I can do here is then hold the Windows key, hit Control, and then hit C, and I can quickly invert my windows very quickly. Now, this is pretty important for me personally when I'm looking at photos online, and I want to quickly spot out if they're fakes. So the easiest way to spot out a fake, fake photo, in my opinion, is to invert the colors and you'll see if they've been trying to hide the edges on the photos and stuff like that. So this is a great setting that I have and I do recommend to quickly invert windows if you guys want to spot out phonies. So now we can move on to privacy and security and here's where I like to customize things a little bit different to others. So first we can left click on Windows security and then we can left click on virus and threat protection. Now we can go to this virus and threat protection tab here and go to left click on manage settings. And I like to leave real time protection on. It works really well. It doesn't affect performance in games, at least when I've tested this setting. But then we can go down to cloud delivered protection. I like to turn this off. I like to turn off automatic sample submission and also like to turn off tamper protection. Though your mileage may vary here. This is just how I do things. Though then we can left click on our settings and get back to the privacy and security main tab. And then we can left click on general and windows permission. And then I like to turn off all these top four tabs here, leave these two off. Now also after that, we can left click on privacy and security, get back to this uh, tab right here, diagnostics and feedback. And I like to make sure that send optional diagnostic data is turned off as well as the tabs below it are all turned off too. Then left clicking on privacy and security, getting back here to activity history. I like to make sure this is turned off too. Store my activity history on this device. Then we can also left click clear history for good measure. Now after that, we can get back to privacy and security and go down to search permission. And here's where I like to left click on and turn these off the Microsoft account and work or school account settings, as well as leaving this safe search on moderate. I find it does a really good job just on the moderate setting. Also, we can go down to history. And if you don't like this setting on, you can leave this off to improve your search suggestions. So I don't really need any search suggestions. I know what I'm searching for when I use the search bar in Windows. And if I'm on a search engine, I'm on a different browser and on a different search engine altogether. Now also below that is more settings, show search highlights. I like to turn this off as well, since again, I know what I'm searching for when I use that tab. They're left clicking on privacy and security. We can then go to the individual app permissions and we can disable certain apps from using that hardware or for instance, location, which is a service in itself that I make sure is just completely turned off if we left click that. Though going through these services here, for instance, microphone, I do not need Windows Cortana using my microphone. So I can left click and turn that off as well as making sure Xbox and Xbox Game Bar cannot access my microphone since I don't use location, I don't use Cortana and I don't use Xbox or Xbox Game Bar. But also you can do this same uh, sort of process with various other devices like my camera for, for instance and I want to make sure that Xbox can't use my camera but ultimately you can just go through this tab and look at the programs you use and say okay I never use that program to begin with and I can't uninstall it but at least I don't want it accessing various other services and devices the last up here we can left click on windows update page and then we can go down to the advanced options left click on this and we can receive updates for other Microsoft products. So I like to turn this on personally. I also like to go down to optional updates and see what is available for my hardware. And here's where sometimes you can get updates that make your hardware work properly. 
if it otherwise isn't. So after we've completely updated our system, we can then go back to this advanced options here and then left click on delivery optimization. And here's where I like to completely turn this off. Though if you are on a metered connection, especially if you're on a network of computers with a metered connection, maybe we should turn this on to benefit from local network download and sharing. However, choice is yours. I like to turn this off personally. Your mileage may vary. Whew, wow, I can already feel my computer is just so much faster and we're not even done. Now, next up, we've got the NVIDIA control panel. Now, we're also gonna go through the AMD control panel too if you're an AMD user. So depending on your graphics card, there are some important settings in your graphics card's control panel. However, if you are on an Intel Arc GPU, I'm sorry, I haven't used one of these GPUs yet, so I can't help you there. But on your desktop, right click, and then we can go to show more options if it doesn't show up here, and then left click on the NVIDIA control panel. Now we're gonna pull up a heap of settings in the 3D settings. We can go down to the manage 3D settings page here. And what we're gonna go with here is background application max frame rate. What I like to do here is turn this on and then actually set this to 20 FPS. So essentially if there's a program in the background, I can make sure that it's only using 20 FPS. So in other words, it's not utilizing my GPU's power. It's not utilizing any more power than it needs to be using if it's a background application. So here you can set it to whatever setting you like. I personally prefer having this on 20 FPS and I notice it doesn't bog down my computer. Next up here, we're going on to DSR factors. Now, mainly with this setting, I like to have this for not really gaming, but more so productivity in that certain applications can scale down in their UI uh, icons, for example, by turning this on and making essentially your resolution bigger. Now, since I'm using 4K monitors, I leave this off, but if you're using a 1080p uh, monitor, for example, a 24 inch, and you wanna fit more on that monitor, in terms of say, for instance, Adobe Premiere Pro, turning this on can be very helpful. Now, monitor technology. Here's where you can set up G-Sync on your computer. Now, there is some important settings I'm gonna go through here, depending on whether you use G-Sync or whether you use FreeSync. And a lot of FreeSync monitors will now support G-Sync, so they're two and the same. However, if you have N-Sync, that's that group in the 1990s with Justin Timberlake in it, that's uh, no sync, some people like to use that option, then you can just have this set to fixed refresh rate. And But I do still recommend here, either way, if you're using G-Sync or you're using uh, no sync at all, I like to set a maximum FPS cap to either my monitor's refresh rate if I'm using no sync at all, or if I'm using G-Sync for instance, I like to have this set two FPS to three FPS below my maximum refresh rate. And now the reason for doing this, and so you can actually set this within this tab here, max refresh rate. The reason for doing this, we can go on here and put this to your monitor's uh, FPS setting. Now the reason we have this max FPS setting if we're on G-Sync set three FPS below our max refresh rate is so that we don't go risk uh, momentarily, like within a 0.1% or a 1% low, going over that max refresh rate. So even if you've got it set to 172, for example, sometimes it'll go and spike to 175. And say for instance, if you've got it set to 175 on a 175 Hertz monitor, it'll constantly spike to 176, 177. And when it does that, it'll actually break your G-Sync and it won't work properly momentarily. So this is a setting where you want your max FPS set just a little bit below the max refresh rate of your monitor if you've got G-Sync on. And then if you've got no sync on at all, having this just set to 175 is great because essentially here we're saving power. And so if we've got our GPU just flying up to 350 FPS, we're just using power that yes, we technically will get a faster refresh in, but here's where you would have to be in an absolute pro of pro tournaments and playing for some serious money to really bother with that difference as the most important thing is gonna be your internet connection and your mouse and the other gear that you use. This setting is not gonna make such a huge difference already on a high refresh rate monitor. And also I think I said 0.1% lows and 1% lows. I meant 0.1% highs and 1% highs. Very weird term when you think about it since we're always used to 0.1% and 1% lows. And now if you're wondering about the technical reason for all this that we just described as well, simple answer, Blurbusters said so.
Then we go to triple buffering. I like to leave this off. Then there's vertical sync. I like to turn this off as well. Virtually pre-rendered frames. This should be set to one by default. And if it's not, I like to turn it on to one natively. Then we've got power management mode. I like to turn this on prefer maximum performance. This is important if you're on a desktop computer, but if you are on a laptop, you may wish to leave this on balanced. Now for low latency mode, this is important. I like to leave this on instead of ultra where ultra can cause some pretty big spiking in FPS. So your mileage may vary here. I like to turn this on. I find it's the best balance. And now after you're done with all that, it's time to hit apply and move on to change resolution tab where this is important if you've got a TV and you're hooking that up to a PC and your, for instance, your refresh rate is not displaying in Windows. Sometimes this can happen. You can actually go down to the PC tab here, go down to the resolution, click the resolution of your uh, TV, then go to refresh rate and you can unlock that max refresh rate and click apply here. But also there's another powerful tab here and that is the NVIDIA color settings. Now, if your default color settings look a little bit weird, they look a little bit washed out, you can then left click on use NVIDIA color settings and for instance, get the max bit rate out of your a monitor if it's a 10-bit OLED for instance you can change this from 8-bit to 10-bit or if it's an output dynamic range on limited you can change this to full and get 0 to 255 in the color band there as well as the output color format I make sure this is set to RGB however if you can't get RGB to work properly then YCBCR444 is the next best option now you can set this up for every individual monitor hit apply and you should be good to go then now we're on to lastly the AMD control panel. If you are on an AMD GPU, there are some similar settings here, but there's also some very different settings. For instance, in the AMD control panel, you can also undervolt your GPU, especially if you're on a later, say RX 5000, RX 6000, or even now RX 7000 series card, I would recommend undervolting with AMD's control panel as opposed to undervolting on video using MSI Afterburner. So in this control panel, if you want to undervolt your GPU, which I highly recommend, I've got a full tutorial. I'll put the link up here for you guys. But other than that, let's go into some of the settings I like to leave on. And the first of which is Radeon Anti-Lag. I like to have this on by default. And then I like to make sure that FreeSync is turned on. And just like the NVIDIA control panel, we can set our max FPS. And if you want to know the explanation, you can just go back to the NVIDIA control panel part where we explain why if we've got FreeSync turned on, and we want to make sure this is turned on with our monitor first in the OSD. We can enable it here, and then we can turn our max FPS just slightly below that max refresh rate of our monitor. Now, if we've got no sync at all, I like to set this to the max uh, same FPS as our refresh rate of our monitor, and that's just going to save power. If we're blowing way past that, we're just essentially, in my opinion, wasting frames. I mean, technically, you can get a faster draw, but it's not worth the power wastage in the long run, especially with power being so expensive. But again, max FPS slightly below your max refresh rate if you've got FreeSync on and just at the max refresh rate if you've got FreeSync off. Though, here's also one important feature if you're like me and you use a capture card, and that is I personally turn off HDCP or high definition content protection. This is actually enabled by default on AMD GPUs. And so to get here, you have to go to the custom overrides and accept the terms and conditions and then go down to the setting and turn that off. You'll have to restart your computer. But if you're getting a no signal out of your AMD GPU, for instance, with a capture card, this will fix that and enable you to get uh, solid captures out of your AMD graphics card after you do this. However, that being said, it may be at the detriment of you not being able to watch high definition or 4K Netflix on your computer anymore. So if you're a streamer that watches 4K Netflix on your computer, maybe you to interchange and go between these settings on on and off. Though in terms of the other settings available in the Radeon tab, I think AMD do do a great job of getting their control panel set up by default for the right settings. However, if you do have problems, then you may wish to go into the advanced options and just like the NVIDIA control panel, turn on and off some of those settings that we talked about in that menu. However, there are additional settings like Radeon Chill, which can automatically optimize your GPU for your monitor's refresh rate. So there are some settings here that you may wish to experiment with, but from the get-go, I just turn on Radeon Anti-Lag. So I find it works the best for me personally when I'm using an AMD GPU. Now, also AMD have their Relive software package 
which is essentially like shadow play. It's a capture software, which I personally use if I'm using an AMD GPU. So I'll install this when I first install my AMD drivers. However, there is a bit of a catch at the moment. I think this is a bug with AMD's drivers right now is that if you've got a Ryzen 7000 series CPU, you have to go into the BIOS and disable the iGPU and make sure it doesn't show up in Windows before you install your drivers with a Radeon GPU. Otherwise, if you have this iGPU enabled, it will make sure that Relive can't be installed. And so you have to go back and reinstall your drivers again with this iGPU disabled in the BIOS. So what you do is disable the iGPU, uh, install your Radeon graphics card, like an RX 6800, for instance, with your Ryzen 7000 series CPU, install that uh, software with Relive, and then go back into the BIOS and re-enable your iGPU. The same applies if you've got, say for instance, a Ryzen 5 5600G and an RX 5700 XT, for example. Uh, it's a bit of a bug that I wish AMD would iron out, but if you're confused about why this is happening, you've got two AMD components, CPU and GPU, and the CPU has the iGPU or it's an APU, then this can fix that problem. And with all that out of the way, you should now finally have a Windows 11 system that is running snappier it's also more responsive, but at the same time, you may be getting some higher FPS in games, which is what this whole tutorial is about. It's about giving you a better experience in Windows 11. Now, also on that note, we will have a Windows 11 ISO coming out with a lot of these customizations from the get-go installed. I'm gonna have my Windows 11 ISO and we're also gonna do a Windows 10 optimization in ISO next month as well for Windows 10 lovers. But we'll have this ISO coming out, explain what the changes are. And so it's good if you guys want to use Windows 11 like Tech Yes does if you're a power desktop user. This will be coming out. We'll be able to share it, explain what's happening with this ISO when it's launched. So stay tuned for that. You can do that by uh, hitting the sub button, ringing that bell with all notifications turned on. You get the videos as soon as they drop here at Tech Yes City. Also, another good thing about this today's Windows 11 optimization tutorial is that everything is completely reversible we're not doing any reg edit hacks or anything like that and this can cause permanent damage to your windows os install where sometimes you'll have to go back and completely reinstall windows if you do these reg edit hacks so i don't recommend touching the registry and editing that because it can cause permanent issues so we've done none of that in today's tutorial everything is reversible completely friendly so if you come into any problems after doing this tutorial you can go back and reverse some of the things and find out what doesn't work and what works for you and ultimately it should be giving you a much better experience in the end and if you have any questions or comments about today's video or any tips of your own be sure to drop them in the comment section below but before we move on to the question of the day we also got the sponsor of today's video vip scd keys and they've got those windows 10 pro key oem licenses single end user so they'll never get deactivated going for as little as 14 bucks after you use that coupon bftyc and that link in the description below instantly delivered so you can get activated straight away you can also use the windows 10 pro key for windows 11 it works interchangeably and you can save a few bucks instead of going out and getting the windows 11 pro keys which are more expensive but again the windows 10 they work fine for the windows 11 get yourself a bargain today get activated and thank you guys for watching today's tutorial hope you enjoyed it and with that aside we've got the question of the day here and this comes from scaltura and they ask have you automated your windows installs and the answer to that is i've done the custom isos but i still install that every time i do a fresh install that's because i just like going through the pc manually and i do it in the background so while i'm installing windows I'll go do something else and then just watch that PC from start to finish. I'll have to stress test it and then make sure it's good to go before I do flip that PC. However, that said, I don't automate like other people would automate when they set up a whole, uh, for instance, 100 PCs at a time. I'm not automating in that fashion. Hope that answers that question and I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.